Let's take a live look at San Jose now, where we are hearing from a Bay Area man who stopped an attack on an Asian woman. The attack happened in the tunnel at the Diridon train station. Brandon Haas says that he rounded the corner and found a woman on the ground and some guy pulling her by the hair. Haas says that he rushed over, then followed the suspect as he tried to get away. And the best sound I've heard in my life is the, the clink of the handcuffs. She had told me that uh, the man had come up with a chokehold behind her and brought her down to the ground, which is where I came upon it. And he had said, Asians, Asians. Ha says that he acted on pure instinct and adrenaline. So what should you do if you find yourself in a similar situation? New at 11, KPIXI's Betty Yu joins us now with a look at how bystanders can help without putting themselves in danger. It's tricky. Yeah, and every situation is different, Ken. We have seen so many brazen attacks against Asian Americans captured on cell phones. An intervention expert says getting involved doesn't always have to mean getting in the face of a perpetrator because that could escalate the situation. <laughs> We've seen verbal attacks. Like this tech CEO who harassed an Asian family having dinner in Carmel. The waitress intervened. We've also seen physical attacks. A woman dragged by a car during a robbery on Polk and Bush. Oh, oh. Sunday afternoon, some now? bystanders rushed to help her. There's a lot of different scenarios, but what do we do as bystanders? Oh my God. Something. Do something. Kat Shea is an anti-hate training coordinator with Asian Americans Advancing Justice. She started offering virtual bystander intervention courses in the fall. Up until January, she normally get up to 30 people per webinar. Now, I have 600 emails in my inbox that I can't get to, and I'm capping out at about 500 attendees each time. Um, so we know that things have really escalated a lot. What are uh, some of the impact. This is a sample of an online course where she teaches direct and indirect ways to help, including creating any sort of distraction to derail the attacker, finding a person of authority nearby, and checking in with the victim. You can even console and support somebody after, after the fact of something happened because you still want to be able to va really validate and really center the person who was harassed. Shay herself was a victim of assault. She says she was punched and knocked to the ground by a man asking for a dollar three years ago at the Fruitvale BART station on a busy Saturday morning. I slowly get back up, realize that I'm a little bit bruised, and I look around and everyone is still just going about their day. And Shay said that it took her several months to even find the courage to report what had happened to her. She says creating safe space for victims should be a priority so we can give them an option to leave a dangerous situation. And we, when we say distract, that could be as simple mm -hmm. as honking your car horn. Yelling something out. Also, open your eyes and your ears. Look at the person who's doing this. Get a description, license numbers. Remember these things and you can help out. Yeah, that, those details can really help officers. All right, Betty, thank you.